What's up guys? This week's been big news for Atlas. End of last month, or like, yeah, the end of May, I did put out a video saying I think we're going to see a patch in the next few weeks. And here it is, it was a bit later than I expected. Um, obviously the patch isn't out yet, we're going to see it sometime in July. They said the start of July, but we'll see. It wasn't rocket science, it wasn't outrageous speculation on my behalf. Um, it, if you look back through the patch notes, you, there is a trend of every couple of months they put out a patch. Despite all the negativity you'll see with the game, of they're not developing it, the game's dead, etc. They've always been developing it, might have been quiet, they might have turned down the development a little bit while they was focusing on Arc Genesis. So, um, yeah, but they've always been developing it. I was not expecting what they've announced. I wasn't expecting what they've done. And um, to everyone that's been affected by the wipes and losing everything they've worked so hard for, I'm so sorry to see that, guys. I've been fortunate I've had an EU PV server, and um, we're lucky enough to, to be able to play a little bit longer before they wipe our server and take everything down. Um, I think overall it's for the greater good, but yeah, guys, I, I really feel for you. Um, you know, games like Atlas and Ark and just survival games in general, especially on official servers, people put a lot of time in, thousands and thousands of hours. Um, and yeah, to lose everything you've been doing with no notice is unbelievable. Um, there is something I want to mention a little bit regarding the... Um, where, because I thought this come out of nowhere, but they have actually hinted at this a while ago, but they did hint at it. We'll look at that in a moment. But yeah, it's, like I said, people put in thousands of hours into this game, and to just be given less than, it wasn't even, like, I think it was like 16 hours or something before they, like from them making the announcement to taking the servers down. And then on like the Reddit pages and on forums and stuff, people were going in chat like, um, why can't I log on? What's going on? They had no idea. And then they find out all their stuff's gone. Absolutely shocking. Once again from Wildcard, Grape Shop, whatever, they're the same thing. The communication is horrendous. It's I don't know if they'll see this, but guys, you really need to work on that. It's so bad. I don't care like if you're busy or whatever. You can't just take down servers with less than 24 hours notice. It's absolutely shocking. Um, like I said, I'm very lucky, but I'd have been so pissed off if I'd logged on. And, and that happened to me. I'm not playing on PvP, I'm playing on PvE, but still, like, I put in so much effort and time into my builds and just playing the game I really enjoy. And, and to find out that they were just going to pull everything was just beyond belief. So I, I really do feel sorry for you guys that have lost everything. Um, like I said, it's for the greater good. We're, we're getting a new map. The new map sounds like it's going to be good. And um, I. Before I mention the um, like, they did hint towards this happening at some point. I just want to say that Atlas, I think in initially was intended to not really have a separate PvP and PV. I think the PV was kind of if you just didn't want to do any PvP whatsoever. But I actually think PvP was never meant to be, um, you know, like a flat PvP kind of game. It wasn't meant to be just that. It was meant to be that. Um, it was meant to create these areas that would be safe for you to just do PvE if that's what you wanted to do with always the risk of something happening of another company around you raiding your area but overall it was meant to be that like a big company would control an island the smaller company solo players would get in under the wing of that company that controlled that island that area that territory and they could play there safely and then if you wanted to get somewhere that was a bit hairy and you know there was a high risk of getting you know into an engagement then you would you know either you've got a company that you can provide your own escort with or you would trade with someone pay someone to, to escort you somewhere I think that was the the idea behind the game and it's a really good idea it's a really great um, way of playing games if you've seen Eve or um, like I play at the moment Star Citizen, it's very much what happens in them games. And just a brief summary if you don't know what I mean by that is, on EVE there are areas that are high security where you would initially start the game basically. In them areas, there <laughs> PvP is possible. I believe, it might be different now, but I believe when I last played it you could maybe get attacked, but you wouldn't get destroyed because the minute someone attacks you, 
the the Empire Navy would come in and destroy the um, aggressor kind of thing. Um, and it just wasn't worth it. There was no reward for the, the PvP player in that situation. As you move away from the high security areas, like further out, then you, be you enter eventually into an area known as Nullsec, which was zero security. This would be the equivalent on Atlas to the areas that you can claim islands. But on EVE you would claim a system, and a big company would take that system. Other companies would fight over it, there would be a war kind of thing. But once everything would settle down, a big company would probably take hold of it. You could move in there and make your base in these Nullsec areas, which is normally dangerous. But because a big company owned it, you were much safer. It was also the most prosperous place to be, the, where you could earn the most money. So it was worth being there. But if you were just PvEing, you were safe to an extent. Like I said, you'd have to like arrange escorts and things. You'd have to really think about which way you was going to places. And I think in Atlas, that's what they, they wanted to do. So you would get these areas where big companies would control islands. Like I said, the smaller companies, solo players, would settle down. And if they needed to get anything and go anywhere, you'd get an escort. Some people might not like that, but that is actually, in my opinion, an amazing way to, to have a game set up. You're going to have a player-driven economy, a player-driven like security system, effectively. And, um, yeah, you might go weeks and weeks without ever getting into conflict on your island, and then a big company will roll through and wipe the company that controlled the island, and you'll have to, you might not even have to start again. They're, they're most likely just target the main company. And then you would just be under the wing of whoever took control, basically, is what would happen. Um, and I think, to an extent, that is what has happened in PvP. I've not really played it because I always thought I didn't have time to, um, because I work away from home for like four to five days, and I mean literally away from home. I don't come back until the end of my week. So um, it, I just couldn't make that work, and I've never really tried to experiment with it, because I've tried it on Ark in the past and it didn't work, but PvP and Atlas is a lot different to Ark. Um, but I think the new map is going to improve that gameplay and improve them kind of that kind of way of playing. So that um, yeah, we're going to see better PvP and it's going to really have a better feeling to the game, I believe. And um, they mention in the when they talk about the new map that PV would take a new direction. I don't know what they meant by that. I'm thinking maybe a new game mode, some form of game mode. Some games do that. They have like a separate thing. So maybe we'll see something like that. And PvP was going to be the main aim. And I think they're just going to refine it and do like what I just said. I think we're going to see that kind of gameplay. So yeah, really interesting. Let's go and look at these notes. I'm not going to go through them because obviously I'm late to the party with this guys because I was at work when they announced this. Sod's Law. I was waiting for this big announcement, or, or just an announcement, I wasn't expecting anything like this, um, and obviously it dropped when I was at work. So I'm not going to go over it, I just want to point out some key things, you've probably already seen it. If not, I'm going to put the link down below to the this notes that we're looking at now, the news from the cabin, the original thing that they announced, and the second um, announcement they made for the new map, and also where they talk about the new team members, and the new team members have a little introduction to us. So you guys can check that out, but I just want to point out a few things. So, in the original post where they announced the big changes, our first major change to Atlas will be a whole new world map, and that's what we were talking about. And um, they also said that another piece of Atlas grander plan is to focus on PvP play with an eye towards breaking out PvE play to something else. Like I said, I don't know what they mean by the, the breaking the PvE into something else, but um, like I said, I think we're going to see what I described earlier as the main way of playing this game and I will be, if that is the case, I will definitely be going down that road because it's really really fun from other games that I've played even if you don't want to engage in PvP it really is edge of the seat stuff sometimes when you've got all your cargo loaded on your ship and all your cash is invested in it and just hoping no one comes and jumps you it's really exciting, it's a nice way to play also, obviously, if it goes tits up and you lose everything, it's really disheartening. But if you make it, it's a good feeling. It's a really good way to play. So then, of course, the devastating news. The NAPVE would be taken offline and they'd be leaving the EU PVE server. So, um, yeah, not great. Like I said, a lot of people have lost a lot of stuff without even knowing it. But let's not focus on the negative side of things. Further down, this is really interesting. This is what I really took away from this, really, was uh, plans for trade winds, farms, warehouses, and more. Now, the key thing there to me is warehouses. 
I and many others have wanted to see better use of NPCs, better use of free ports. I personally wanted to see more towns, more little villages maybe you can stumble across, some fishing ports, things like that. And if you go around the current map, that's you know the map before it gets wiped, um, you will occasionally find like abandoned villages and random little like seaside town type things that, that nothing's happening in. And um, it would have been cool if that was where you would find NPCs. But like I said, they mention here warehouses, so I'm wondering if we're going to see like warehouses on docks, and it's somewhere that you'll be able to take resources, items, whatever, to trade with people. Maybe you store them there, and from that point you can then trade with NPCs. Maybe we're going to say and see an in-game market, an in-game auction house. That is something I'd love to see. Um, at the moment it's all done through discords and people have to put a lot of time and effort in and as amazing as that is I'm sure they'd rather be doing other things and it'd be cool to see an in-game version so maybe that's something we're heading towards but yeah that was something that really stood out to me the farms is very interesting I don't know what they mean by that maybe we're going to be able to go there to buy seeds and vegetables and fruit instead of necessarily finding it obviously we'll still be able to find them out in the wild but maybe you can buy certain seeds and that from the farms maybe it's just another way we're going to be able to trade with NPCs. I don't know if this is the case by the way guys, I'm just assuming with all these new trade things that we probably are going to see something to do with the NPCs, hopefully. And uh, the trade wind is something they mention in their next post which is the announcement for the map. And um, I'll go down to the bottom, we'll cover this first. The Golden Age Islands are moving to the map centre, surrounding it with a high density ring of lawless territory and add in sparse island outskirts where players can claim island territory to have lower risk experience which is what I was talking about earlier with the you know when a big company would own them areas and you would move in with that company and get to know them. Guys a big part of Atlas and games like this is to communicate with people, interact with people, get to know people, get into other companies not necessarily setting up your own um, like on Star Citizen, if you get into a big organisation, it opens up so many doors for you, gives you much more gameplay, much more like things, obviously the same as gameplay, but much more things that you can do. And um, I think that is, you know, that's what you're going to have to do if you want to play like this. And it, honestly, it's really, really rewarding to play like that, as well as obviously losing stuff can suck, but yeah, it's pretty cool. This will reduce the amount of selling between court islands, incite more conflict and give more opportunity for companies to capture and control water lanes for upcoming trade route systems. Obviously this is what we were just talking about with the trade winds, I think this is obviously the same thing. So that's really interesting to see what they mean by that. So maybe there's going to be certain areas that people fight over to control and maybe if you own it you get to like... A percentage of tax maybe of like trade going through there I don't know there's lots of possibilities with that it's going to be really cool to find out what they're doing but um, yeah really awesome I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're up to and they're going to reveal more details um, in the weeks ahead so that's really cool guys I'm, I'm I'm I hope you're as excited for this as I am I think this is going to be a massive step in the right direction and obviously there guys you can see the map if you haven't seen it already so there's the golden age route. it looks like really the, the like center of the map all the way around the equator is going to be golden age maybe a bit more in the middle where we're going to get the lawless areas lawless areas are basically where you can't control them and they're going to be a lot wilder they're going to be very dangerous and as you go further out like further out to the edge of the map you're going to get the areas that you can purchase where you can own islands and fight over the control of them that's where you're going to be safest if you just want to like focus on pve stuff um I'm gonna do an, I think I'll do another video on um, what I think people need to do with companies um, and take inspiration from other games but because I don't make this video too long so I'll cover that in another video if you're interested I think there's some really important things to point out there but um, let's go back to the matter at hand so we got the announcement we got the the new team members and I'm sorry guys if you see this and I've butchered your name I don't know if any of them will ever see any of my videos but um, yeah just in case I'm sorry if I butcher your name but I'll try and get these right so first up is Chismy Beard. You can just call me Chismy. I think that's right, and it means gossip in Spanish, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, um, Chismy is going to be the new senior community manager. Uh, then we've got Nami. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering this. I uh, hope I've got that right. And uh, Nami is the new community manager. 
Um, and then we've got Primus, who's also known as Gortok. This is our new lead designer, and this is really cool to see. Obviously, the last lead designer moved on to other things, and um, hopefully he's doing well and doing good stuff wherever he's gone. I can't remember where he went now. They did mention it, but yeah. So, yeah, we've got a new lead design. This is something the negative people within the Atlas community like to wave around in the air at people is we haven't even got a lead designer well now we do we've got a lead designer back which is a massive step in the right direction obviously so Primus says some interesting things it wants to steer the game in a new direction and create a busy roadmap of content so hopefully we're going to see a new roadmap soon which would be really cool to see um, it's something I personally wanted to see we've got the old version um, which maybe I'll go over in another video I don't know yet but um, yeah the Obviously, a new one would be amazing. Prior to working on Atlas, Primus led player experience, economy, and crafting efforts for the fantasy game Wildstar. That's really good to know. The main thing there being the economy and crafting, um, in my opinion. Obviously, player experience is really important. But the big one there is economy, because like I said, with the warehousing and stuff, maybe we're actually going to see some really cool um, trade styles in the game now, and maybe an auction house. I don't know. This is all speculation, of course, guys, but... You know, that would be interesting to see what comes of that. So that's good to know that that's something they've worked on previously. But yeah, and like I said, I'm not going to go over it all. I just wanted to briefly cover some points. And obviously, you know, you will have seen this already, hopefully. If not, links down below if you want to read it properly. Um, also, you can check out my buddy Survival Bob. He read through both of these posts already. If you don't want to read and you just want to listen, go check out Bob and Bob will read for you. I'll put his link in the description below as well. And... Um, yeah, so pretty damn cool. Really happy with it. Now, I mentioned earlier that they did mention before bringing in some big changes and some other mention of official network. So, yeah, new roadmap will kick off after Xbox release. Obviously, the Xbox release was a little while ago now, but still fairly recently. And we've not really heard anything since they made that release. And change will be based around multiplayer modes and official network. Obviously, we've had some of the official servers down. And obviously they've clearly mentioned they want to change the direction of PvP and do something different with PvE. So this isn't everything. We've got a new map. So I think that is one of the parts of this isn't everything and I'm probably going to see more. So I think really they have still kept the old roadmap in mind and this was intended. And I'm not making excuses for them. It was still shocking what they've done. They should have given more notice. But yeah, I think in a way they kind of hinted at this, but obviously that is not clear as to any major changes or any wipes or servers coming down. But yeah, they did mention this. This was from the roadmap previously, which was from um, August 2019. So that was when they first mentioned this, which is what I pulled it from. So yeah, in, <laughs> in a, not a very clear way they kind of mentioned this before. Like I said, I might go over the old roadmap at some point just to like look through it and see if we can see any more things that we might be getting and if they did actually hint at anything else. So yeah, there we go guys. A few of my thoughts on the what's happening at the moment and the direction the game's taking. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to do a... I'd like to do a few more of these videos and cover a few other things, especially what I think people could do with companies. And um, yeah, the way you could set things up, if, especially if you wanted to focus on PV. But I'll do that in another video along with some other things as well. And um, yeah, if nothing else, guys, I hope this was interesting. And if you want to know any more of my thoughts on anything or, you know, just got any questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts as well. If you're a PvP player, what do you think is the main thing they need to change going forward? Um, that's really important to me that you guys on PvP point this out because, I, like I said, I haven't played PvP. And um, although I'd love to, like I said, I know there's a lot of problems with it. And um, yeah, I wouldn't want to speak completely out of turn. So let me know down below what the major things that need fixing are. Don't be salty and say the game's trash can't fix it. Give us a genuine thing. If you're a PvE player, let me know what you want to see change. What do you think to the direction? What do you think they meant by the um, different direction for PvE? Um, really interesting choice of words, that, in my opinion. And like I said, I think maybe we're just going to see a new game mode or something. And the main game is going to be the PvPVE, which is what the game should have been originally in my opinion so yeah thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time <laughs>